sort the paperwork out, and we'll be all right. I'd just like to read from John chapter 14. And we're going to cut in at verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still do not know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me, doing his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. And even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit, who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him, because it isn't looking for him, and doesn't recognise him. But you know him, because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. I'm sure the Lord has had a blessing for the reading of his word this morning. We started off with, I am the way, the truth and the life. A fairly straightforward, simple statement when we started reading about I am in the Father and the Father is in me it's very easy to get confused and it gets quite complicated to try and sit down and work actually what does this all mean there are much more learned people than me who have sat down for many years and tried to work out what it all means and they're still thinking it through but I don't want to go there this morning I want to keep things straightforward and fairly simple. So I thought we'd start by talking about life. What is it? There's a nice simple one to start with, isn't it? What is true in your life? What's false? What's fake? My son, what my youngest son, He's a computer programmer, so he talks a language which is different to my language, because right? he does things with computers that I just sit there and go, I don't know how you did that, I don't understand. And he said, talk to me about artificial intelligence. He said, you can get this app. You tap in a few words and a picture comes up. It's been generated by the computer. No one's drawn it, it's the computer that's drawn it. And I had a go at it and it was, quite weird and quite strange and it was it's not true it's just been generated by a computer almost as if someone's just painted it a 
Friday evening, my wife and I, it's Jackie over on the far side over there, we went up to Cardiff, we went to the Millennium Centre, and we went to see Wicked, the musical. I was told beforehand, you need to know the story of the Wizard of Oz. Now, if any of you know the story of the Wizard of Oz, you know there's not a single bit of truth in that at all. It is so much make-believe, <coughs> it's incredible. And Wicked is along the same lines. And there's even make-believe in the story, which gets even more confusing. And in the end, if you're not following track, you're just going, what is going on? We've just had, well, four months ago, a general election. We've just had, on Saturday, the announcement of who will be the leader of the Conservative Party. The Americans are just going through the last days of their election for a new president. And we have politicians making many statements. Is it for personal gain? Or is it for national gain? Is it for their personal interest, or is it for the national interest, or the international interest? And we left confused. Can we trust what they're saying? What can we trust? Ourselves, what do you believe? What do I believe? What am I building my life upon? What's your life based on? I'm working as a teaching assistant in a comprehensive school and I overheard two teachers discussing. And one of them said, I, I think I believe the evolution thing, where we all came from animals. And the other one said, yeah, I think that's what I believe as well. That was the only bit of conversation I had and often left, or heard and often left. I think. I don't want to pick on the evolution subject, but it's like, I think. I'm not sure. And they're basing their life on that. What are we basing our life on? This church, you know, stands on the words in here, on the Bible. The belief that the Bible is true and reliable. There's no ifs and buts about it, is the belief of the church that is here. It's the belief of myself as I stand here. I don't understand all that's in them. I don't understand some of the stuff that I just read to you. But I believe it to be the truth. And I base my life around what this book says. It's a bedrock, a firm foundation to build on. Yes, it's old. It's an old, old book. But it has stood the test of time. It is still relevant. It is still impactful, even today. And when I mean today, I mean today, now. So, in the short time that we've got, what does it say? We're not going to go through verse by verse, don't panic, okay? But, it all points and it all revolves around the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the fulcrum point. That's the most important point. It asks us questions. And one of the main questions is, what do we think about Jesus? Jesus asked that question, who do you say that I am? And this morning, what's your answer to that? 
because that is critical absolutely utterly critical Jesus himself says many things about himself let's just pick up what we've read I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me that is quite a bold claim we pray our Father who art in heaven no one comes to the Father that's in heaven except through me the Lord Jesus Christ the truth we accept it or we reject it there's no middle ground here we accept it and it changes our life we reject it and our life carries on in whichever way we choose if we decide I'll come back to this later we've just rejected it because we haven't accepted it if someone gives you a gift and you say I'll put it there later I'll pick it up later you've rejected it because you haven't accepted it accept or reject to have no opinion, to ignore, is to reject. Who do you say that I am? Jesus states that he is God. That caused a stir. Amongst some of the most learned people of his time, he makes a statement before Abraham was, I am. We might think, and people might think, that's a weird thing to say. But those people, they knew exactly what Jesus was saying. He didn't say before Abraham was, I was. No, he says, I am. He's saying, I have always existed. And only God has always existed. No time is relevant. There is no starting point with God. God has always been. If we try and sit down and work that one out, we'd be here for a good length of time and still walk away going, I can't quite grasp that. Some things we just have to accept. <coughs> I am the way. To where? To the Father. To heaven to a personal relationship with God to a peace that passes understanding to life each of us walked underneath a banner I don't know how many of you read it but you walked underneath it new life it says on the doorway as we walk in it also says to ask questions when you're in here Steve's there and he'll answer the question I'll answer a few if I can. Steve said. The way. Only through the Lord Jesus Christ. The life. All have done wrong. Romans 3.23 tells us we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Doesn't matter who we are. All. Some of the Bible is very black and white. No one comes to the Father. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've got an 18 month grandson. We've got two other older ones and they're incredibly naughty. They're lovely, but they're incredibly naughty. But this little 18 month one has found he can be stubborn. He's 18 months. He just stands there when it's time for his mum to take him home and ignores mum. Did he learn that? Is it just part of his nature? He's not going to be perfect. He's going to fall short of the glory of God. All. We've all done something wrong. 
And because we fall short of God's glory, as we stand, we can't go to heaven. Because heaven is perfect. And if we're not perfect, we can't get there. But it doesn't end there. You know when you find a book in the Bible and then it suddenly goes missing? There it is. Found it again. Romans 3. For everyone has sinned, we fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. It's called Calvary. When I did something wrong, I spiritually died. Not physically, spiritually I died. There's nothing I can do to get back that spiritual new life by myself. But we have been justified through grace it's a gift from God redemption another good Bible word to be redeemed the price has been paid every time you go into a shop and buy something you redeem what it is you're buying you pay a price and then you can take the goods, the service, whatever it is. We have been redeemed. The Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary was punished for the things I did wrong, the things you did wrong. The price was paid and God was satisfied. Redeemed, price paid. Jesus, through Calvary, is the way to the Father. He is the way to this new life. John tells us, when, tells, us of the, tells us of the Lord Jesus talking to a man called Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is told he has to be born again. And poor Nicodemus, he doesn't quite get it. He says, how? That can't happen. I can't be born again. And Jesus explains, not physical, being born again, but spiritual, being born again. Through Christ, by accepting Christ as our Saviour. This new life, Acknowledging that we've done wrong, repenting, saying sorry for what we've done wrong, wanting to turn and go in a different direction, the way that God would have us to go, and believing, asking the Lord Jesus into our heart. Me and Steve, we go back many years when Steve had black hair, right? and I have brown hair. And I was this high. Used to help run a, a Bible camp down on the Gower. And it was on that camp back in 1978, July 27, about 7.30 p.m., because the evening service had just finished, that I literally got down on my knees in the porch of Horton Community Hall. It's still there. The step is still there. And I ask the Lord Jesus Christ to be my saviour. A simple step of faith. And God saw it. And heard what I had to say. 
and God is faithful and just and I know I'm on my way to heaven. Did I do anything? A simple step of faith. All the hard work, the painful work was done through the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. Has life been easy since? No. Have I ever been left alone by God? No. Sometimes I've walked away from him, it feels, but he's never left me. It is a different life. It's an assured life. It's a life with new hope. A peace with God, and for me that's one of the main things, is knowing that one day everything's going to be all right. For all the rubbish and the strife that's going on at present, one day everything's going to be all right. And I'm accompanied by God. Because we read further in John chapter 14, beyond I am the way, the truth and the life. And I don't want us to just think we're saved and that's it. I want us to know that we're saved when we accept Christ as Saviour and the journey continues and we are not left as orphans. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross resurrected on the third day, ascended to heaven, back with the Father. But we are not left as orphans. Because the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, draws alongside us. There is a mystery in the Bible and it's called the Trinity. Three separate entities in one, but three separate entities and we still can't work that one out. It's a mystery. How that happens, how it works, a step of faith accepted. A step of faith. But the Spirit is alongside those who have accepted Christ as Saviour. Not if, not for some, but for all, the Spirit draws alongside. We're promised that. A guide, the Spirit of Truth, we're not left alone to struggle in this life. We're not promised an easy life. But I live a life in the knowledge that I'm right with God. Secure in Him. But why would He do all of this? Why? Why would the Lord Jesus Christ come, die on a cross, for people who've basically rejected Him? scorned him and turned away. Why? Little Jesse is seven. Little Owen is five. If Jesse doesn't get his own way, he literally starts shouting and screaming. If Owen doesn't get his own way, he storms off going, I'm never going to be your friend again. Little Ellis, if you try and put him in a push chair, Instead of sitting that way, he arcs his back and he goes this way. Right? Ellis is 18 months. Okay. Are they being naughty? Yes. Do I love them? Yes. And God loves us. I've got a whole other tranche of verses. 12 o'clock, I'm meant to finish, aren't I, Stu? Yeah. John 3, 16, 1 John 4, verse 8, verse 10, verse 16 again. God is love. All through this scripture, we see God's love. We see how he interacts. We see the hurts, the pain. We see victories because he loves us. Full stop. God is love. Full stop. No conditions. Nothing. He died for us on a cross because he loves us. For God so loved the world Whosoever believes in him should not perish but have 
everlasting life. And that everlasting life for me started in 1978. Physically, I'm probably going to die unless Christ returns. If he doesn't return before I die, then I will die. But you know what I'm trying to say. But then I'm in heaven because of what Christ has done. Because of that simple step of faith. And it's not just for me. I'm just part of for God so loved the world. It's everyone. Everyone. That is how vast his love is. Reaching out. He's the way, the truth and the life. You want something truthful to hold on into your life? Look into this. Look to Jesus. There is truth. There is not artificial intelligence, not fake, not false, not self-interest, but truth given to us. 